nature and jiva is the conscious being but all this he says vasudevat paro brahman na chanya artha asti tattva if you analyze he says that there is nothing other than vasudev that everything is vasudev vasudeva sarvamiti samahatma sudurlam krishna says in bhagavad gita that one who understands that all this is vasudev and it is said it is said sarvam khalu idam brahma that everything is brahma that is upanishadic language little bit confusing type gita and puranas they speak more openly so krishna says vasudev that is also liable to be misinterpreted but at least it is more clear than brahma so one who understands that everything is vasudev then he is a mahatma so that means brahma is a great mahatma because he is saved vasudevat paro brahman na chanya artha asti tattva he says it is not that things are not different they are also different but in reality in essence nothing is different from vasudeva because everything is a manifestation of him so nothing different means it is not independent because something is called different if it has its independent existence if you see these two tables then they are different from each other because the existence of one table does not depend on the existence of another table if you break this other table or burn it or decorate it or give it to somebody then nothing happens to this table it has no bearing on it of course at the very subtle level there will be some bearing but we don't perceive anything really speaking so these are two independent things and we can say they are different but there is no object anywhere in this world sentient or insentient which can be independent of krishna whether it can exist independent of him or change or transform increase or decrease anything nothing can happen without him everything happens within him therefore bhagavatam begins with janma dashata and whether it is getting created or it is existing or it is dissolving it all happens in him he is the support he is the cause he is the fountain head of all nothing can be called independent of him it is only he who exists independently so in nyaya they say that all this universe can all the objects in this universe they can be put into seven categories dravya gun karm samanya vishesh samvaya abhav So everything either is an object or a quality or an action or a category like Brahman, Shatru or a relation like there is heat and fire so there is a relationship between heat and fire that is somewhere or there is a wishes that every atom has got some speciality or every soul has got some speciality <laughs> and then there is abhav non existence so it says whatever you see it can all fit in one of these categories bhagavatam has it its own way of categorizing he has basically made five categories no six dravya karma kal swabhav jeevan vasudev 
so there are objects and there is karma and there is time for some yeah they have their own way time is also part of dravya there and so bhava comes in the qualities and jiva comes also in dravya the nine dravyas and karma comes as part of action or if it is a samskara then it is also a quality and then vasudeva is part of atma two types of atma so they have their own way of categorizing but this is how lord brahma is categorizing that whatever you see it can fall into one of these categories but out of all this he says really speaking there is only one category and that is vasudeva that is the super category the super class and that has got further manifestations as dravya or karma or kal or subhav or karma so this is the way brahma is described because <coughs> one supreme entity and then you can say that it exists say in three different ways internal external and then intermediate and then further categories in that this is how bhagavatam is making its divisions so sri vishnath chakravarti says yad roopam ityade prashna daskasya uttaram vaktum prathamam bhagavad vyatirekena anyasya satvam ah dravyam iti so he has asked many questions previously yad roopam what is the roop what is the vigyan what is aadhar and what is the cause and what is the essence ten questions he has asked about the universe narada so now in this he is giving the answer of what is its nature what is its form swarup so he says that swarup of the universe is vasudev that it is not different from vasudev and that's how it began so the goswami also began like that when he said that we should meditate on the universal form of the lord considering this whole universe as his body that these various planetary systems they are different limbs of god so of course that was only seeing it from material point of view but now he is going little more that not only the universe but everything even so bhav even the nature of elements even karma the living beings everything so that means you can see god in everything whether it is sentient or insentient so bhagavatam says that we should pay our senses even to a donkey by falling on the ground there is actually a statement like this in the 11th canto krishna says that because everything is him only and this is the definition of a mahabhagavat so bhagavato uttama given by navyogendra it is put by no is saying that a sarvabhuta sriya prasad bhagavat bhava matmana that one who sees bhagavat bhava in everything and of course the word bhagavat bhava can be translated in many ways but the simplest meaning is existence of bhagwan in everything sarvabhuta sriya navyata so that is the vision of a devotee and it begins with this seeing everything as non different from the lord then the question comes about dravya it says dravyam mahabhutani upadan rupani dravya means the 
five elements which are the upada and the material cause of everything here. Whatever you see, it is made of these five elements. Karma Janma Nimittam and karma is that which gives us birth in a particular form. It is based on past karma. It is also under the control of the Lord. And Kalaha Gunakshobaka. Kala or time is that which makes the modes move. Because if the material modes don't function, they don't make a movement, there will be no creation. So Krishna says, Prakrita hai kriya manani, gunai karmani sarvasha, ahankar vimud hatma, karta hamitu manitu. We are thinking, we are the doers. But nature is functioning under the influence of subhav and kal. Kal is the one which makes it move and how it moves according to its subhav, its nature. The tree is growing, the leaves are coming, the fruits, the coming season. Why they come? Because they have a nature. You may say it is a DNA program inside the DNA. But that is the subhav. So the leaf may fall down, another leaf comes in its place exactly the same. It's not that suddenly on the neem tree you get a leaf of a lemon. Leaf of it doesn't happen. Why? Because the subhav is different. You cut your hair, they grow back. Same. The hair is white, you cut it, doesn't become black. Because inside the subhav is there, it comes out like that. So, and it is happening by time. So, karma is giving birth. The biggest function of karma is to give you birth. Once you have the birth, then so how takes over? Then you have your sobhav which is functioning. Therefore people, no matter where they are, you put them wherever, they do the same thing. They may be in the material world or they may come to a spiritual society. If they really don't take to the spiritual life, it is their sobhav. They just function the same. Same habits, same activities, they will do. The dress will change, the atmosphere may be different. Activities same, because they have the sobhav. If they make a particular mistake, they will make the same mistake everywhere, wherever they go. Because it is the sobhav. So, one can study one's own sobhav. It follows the pattern, the mind, the ideas. It goes into a chakkar. Cycle. So time, because time is going in chakkar, day and night, day and night, seasons, and it is making things happen in that circle. So he says, Kalaha Gunakshodaka. Kala, the time, is called Kalayati Iti Kala. There is one root in Sanskrit. This is called, this root is Kal. It does not have any specific meaning. This root in Sanskrit is called Kamdhenu of Sanskrit. It is supposed to be one cow called Kamdhenu. It can give you anything. Whatever you desire. Like Kalpuriksha, this fulfilling tree, she is a wish fulfilling cow. So there is some roots in Sanskrit and one of them is color. That you can take out any meaning from this, no problem. So one of the meaning of color is that which controls or which moves, which destroys. So many different meanings. So kalayati the kala, which controls, which agitates, which moves. That is Kala, which witnesses. So he, therefore he says that Kala is that which is Gunak Shobaka. It agitates the Gunas. Swabhava Tat Parinam Hetu. And what is Swabhava? 
स्वभाव मीन स्वस्य भाव इति भाव आवर रियल एसेंस व्हाट इज आवर एसेंस एसेंस ऑफ एनीथिंग लाइक दे से दैट द स्वभाव ऑफ द वाटर इज दैट इट फ्लोज फ्रॉम हाई टू लो इट इज लिक्विड दैट इज स्वभाव स्वभाव ऑफ फायर इज टू बर्न सो सिमिलरली दिस स्वभाव इज द कॉज ऑफ परिणाम everything is always under some change modification everything is under flux because everything is changing because these atoms and these molecules and inside the atoms protons neutrons everything is moving <laughs> nothing is stable although we are sitting here on the roof and it looks like that we are stable but try to see the earth how it is running at such a high speed rotating it's around its own axis nothing is stationary nothing is stable in this world that's why it is also called prakriti kri means action and pra means strongly so always प्रकृष्ट रूपेण करोति क्रियते प्रकृति एवरीथिंग इज इन एक्शन फ्रॉम स्मॉल टू बिग ऑल दिस प्लैनेटरी सिस्टम्स नथिंग इज स्टेबल इवन द सन इज नॉट इन वन प्लेस इट्स ऑल्सो मूव्स एवरीथिंग इज मूविंग सो देर फोर एवरीथिंग इज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ टाइम बिकॉज हाउ डू वी नो द मूवमेंट only from time and swabhavas tat parinam hetu and they are moving and they and they move they also undergoing parinam change that is the change the parinam and vikar two types of changes it can change water becomes ice or you evaporate make it steam or you make some chemical reaction with it and make it something else so these are two different types physical change and chemical change so but change means movement something moves so that movement how a thing is going to change that is dependent on the swabhav that is guided by the swabhav and jeevo bhukta then there is a very wonderful fellow called jeev he is sitting inside and he is thinking he is the enjoyer he very much likes to enjoy he is a bliss hunter so he is inside all this mess and he remains stable without changing and he thinks that all this change is either giving him bhokta here doesn't mean only enjoyment also suffering this is same word here in sanskrit bhokta means enjoyer and sufferer experience it now yeah when he is experiencing all this and the experience is only of two types either he likes it or he doesn't like it yes. so he is basically seeing all the change going around him and some changes he likes and some he doesn't like if you eat then it is just a change basically the taste <coughs> because it goes on to your sense it sends a message which is a type of change change in certain molecules they run around some whatever electric current or magnetic current or whatever it goes another change in the brain you say wow this is very nice some little molecules move from here to there nothing more than that and if it is not good if it too much salt or too much chili and your tongue is burning then also another change so you experience But all this he says, Vasudevat paro anya ortho nasti. That none of these things are anya, means they are not independent. 
of Vasudeva. It is very interesting that how Lord is there, He is one, He is the controller, He is the source of everything, yet He can make people feel different. Everybody feels differently. Although we are all His parts. This is very amazing thing. That if we are His part, and if it is only one unit, then there should be one ego. And everything should feel. So it's just like you have your hands, legs, eyes, and they all feel independent of you. So you are the soul, and when something touches you, then your hand also feels something besides you feeling in your what goes in your head. So Lord has made this arrangement that every living entity can feel differently. They can even feel that they are different from Lord. This facility he has given. Although they are not, but they can think by the power of Maya. So the only difference between spirituality and materialism is this much. That means spirituality, people don't feel independent. They feel one. Although they also eat and they also relish and they also play and they have their own feelings, but they don't feel that it is independent of God. So therefore it is said that tat sukhe sukhitvam bhakti means to be happy when Lord is happy. Their happiness and their distress is not just because of their own feelings, independent of God, but they are connected with God's feelings. So if they see that this is making Krishna feel, then they feel happy. And if they think that he is not happy with it, then they also are not happy with it. Although it may be something of their own personal choice or liking or disliking. So they are not independent even to become sad or depressed. Everything is linked with him. And in materialism, we feel independent. This is the only difference. So why this thing is being spoken here to understand and recognize this link? Because really speaking, it is not something that new has to be done. Krishna will speak later on and it will come here also that Baddha Mukta Iti Vyakya Gunta Mena Vastuta that this bondage that we are conditioned soul, we are bound. It is not really in our swarupa, in our eternal, essential, constitutional existence. It is also external to us, but somehow we are catching on to it. And it is very amazing how we can catch on to it if it is external to us. And never give it up. Because anything external you hold on to, somewhere or other you will lose grip on it. You cannot just be holding it permanently. But this attachment to the subtle body and then through that to the gross body, it is permanent. It never gets slackened. It's very amazing. And it is not inside us. How is that something external can really influence us? This is very inconceivable. That's why it is called Maya. But Maya is inconceivable. And that being the case, how can we actually get out of it? And how is it possible? Because Maya is covering us from all sides. He has not left any scope. So therefore, it is only possible by the grace of Krishna, which can pierce through this Maya and enter inside. This has to enter in inside us, and then only we can lose grip over it. So that's why Bhagavatam has this philosophy that it's actually internal potency of the Lord, and it has to enter and go inside the zero, and then it has to act from there. Then only this Maya leaves. That is the meaning Mame Vaya Prapadyante Maya Param Parantika. 
So it is very amazing that how this Maya, which is inferior even to Jiva, which is inert, it can capture the living entity. And yet it does not enter in. It remains outside. So therefore, this idea when we hear and our Acharyas say that without Bhakti it is not possible to get liberated, it is very logical. It is not something fanatical and we don't have to feel embarrassed about it. Because sometimes say, well, why we are saying like this, all paths are equal. No, they are not. We try to understand. Because no other path can give liberation. But they don't have the power. There is no Shakti in them. It is only Bhakti. Because Bhakti is God Himself. And Maya, as we read, does not come in front of God. Vilajjamanaya, Yasya So when Bhakti is there, which means Krishna is there, then she doesn't come. So then immediately she leaves. That's why bhakti is the only process. Whether you mix it with other paths and think that you have become liberated by that path, or you follow pure bhakti, but liberation, freedom from Maya will come only by the grace of bhakti. There is no other way. So that's why these things are being spoken here step by step to make us understand comprehend and digest this. Dravyadi naam maya karyatvat So on dravya, whatever you see, and karma, these are all works of maya. Maya manifests like that. Jeevasya cha maya maya ya jeevasya cha ta chaktitva and maya and jeeva both are shakti is showing that how nothing is different from the law so first to say that whatever manifestation you see all around you is a manifestation of maya maya shakti of the law then maya jeeva maya and then Maya herself and the Jeevas, the conditioned souls, they are Lord Shakti. And Shakti is never independent of Shakti Man. Energy is never independent of its source. So therefore, the only independent personality is the person who owns all these energies. Therefore, Krishna says, Mama Maya he is my Maya. He is the owner, he is the possessor, he is the controller. Viswasya Vasudeva Rupatva Miti. Therefore, this whole universe it is a form of Vasudeva. That's why he is called Vasudeva. Comes from the root Vas, means to live, to exist, to reside. So he is residing <coughs> in everything. Or he is covering everything like a cloth covers our body, Vastra. So that's meaning Vasudevat. Paro Brahman Chani or Asti Tatvata. Yadrupa Mityasya Uttra Mukta. So, in this verse, he has answered the first question, which was Yad Rupa. What is the Rupa? Rupa literally means form, but here it means the essential nature, Swarup of the universe. And he is going to answer each question what is his support and how it 
functions is created it all this will come out here so let's do it That separates them. Yeah, but Swabami is an energy then. So now means the nature of things. The nature of things. So by, by nature they stay like that. Of course, being supervised by the Lord. So means by the not again that they are by the will of the Lord. Say that my in my own perception, uh, the the approach that has been taken in general, you know, in um, in the spiritual path, or specifically in this spiritual path, is that the swabhav or or the individual nature is uh, somehow opposed uh, to the unfolding of, uh, of bhakti or the unfolding of uh, spirit. And so the, the whole attempt has been kind of focused on, you know, a repression or, a, or a annihilation of the swabhav as, a, as an initial step, you know, towards allowing for the, uh, the appearance of uh, divine nature. But uh, it seems that if, if you even look at the Varnashram model, that uh, swabhav is uh, accepted as being uh, something more neutral. As being something that, if it's uh, uh, let's say utilized in the best possible way, can be supportive of that spiritual life. Yeah, that's what Yes. 